I'm Finn Yuri, and I'm now officially a second year medical student at UBC. Well, welcome to my channel and this is a video where I share in detail how a typical week would look at medical school at UBC would look like. Um, and so if you've been following me for the past couple of months, you'll know that I'm trying to share my first year of medical school there retrospectively. I know around this time, preparing to enter medical school last year, I just loved all the info I could get on what to expect the following year and would have loved to see a video like the one I'm about to make. Um, there are a lot of lovely people on the YouTube who share their experience as well, but uh, not as detailed as I would have liked it. Hopefully this is informative to those interested in coming to UBC uh, med one day, uh, wherever you are in your pre-med journey. So. As a disclaimer, a lot of what I'm going to say can be found at this website that I will link in the description down below. Um, but I insert some of my experiences and comments in this video if you're interested, as well as explaining some of the components of the curriculum in layman terms. However, if you just want to explore more and learn about the curriculum for the first years, that's okay too, just go down to the link. Um, so this link is what I found personally when I was researching UBC Med Info bef when I was applying. And so I thought I'd save those of you trouble and share here. Um, it's technically what UBC shares with their incoming first years of the year, so it's very accurate. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and start. So UBC Med is a four-year program. Um, year one and two are considered pre-clinical years of the undergraduate medical education there um, and so it's pretty heavily academic focused uh, and particular attention is paid to the application of basic sciences. Uh, much of the content knowledge that is taught is contextualized into actual clinical situations. Uh, students also have some supervised clinical exposure in clinical experience sessions such as family practice and clinical skills where you can work on volunteer patients and later on standardized patients. All year one students will start their studies uh, with a one week orientation in Vancouver and then continue to their designated sites, VFMP, IMP, NMP, SMP for the second week of orientation in your first year. Second year, it's slightly different schedule but similar since it's pre-clinical year as well. And I hope to share more about what that week would look like when the time comes. The rest of my empty vlogs, I realized, are most so what else I do aside from studying and going to school. Um, everyone has this misconception, at least in my experience, that medical school is super hard and you have no life, 24-7 studying non-stop. But surprisingly, relative to undergrad, it's been a lot more chill which sounds crazy and I'm saying this this is relative obviously it's still a challenge so much content and so much to learn but the way UBC delivers it I feel is so manageable and the student affairs and faculty are all generally so supportive the classmates are all friendly and most are always willing to help if you ask once again I can only speak to UBC but I really enjoy the program and curriculum that they have here I really feel like they treat us as adult learners which is rightly so uh, there's no 10 billion tedious assignments or mini quizzes for a grade. Um, there are really just two big exam periods, midterms and finals. Of course, there's family practice, clinical and communication skills that are mandatory to pass, but that's all largely to prepare you to be a good physician. If you don't want to go to those, then why are you even here? Um, these are all very important tools that everyone wants to do and learn anyways, um, which will all be accumulated uh, to properly pass OSCEs, which is a clinical exam, where they assess your clinical skills and history slash communication skills at the end of the school year. They do have a FOSCEs, a fake OSCEs, um, to help you prepare for the one for grade at the end of the year. Um, and that usually happens in December, and then the final one happens in April, where it's for grade. So this is what a regular week looks like at UBC Med. I'll go through each section with you and elaborate a little more um, in my experience and what it is. So, CBL. In the 
first year CBL is three times a week, which in my personal experience has been great. Um, though it's so quite early, but if it's not that early, I don't think I would start my day early, which I like to do. Anyways, um, as a quick note for those who don't know what CBL is, um, it stand, the letters stand for case-based learning. Um, so CBL is an approach to small group learning for students. Um, in the year, you have six different groups called clusters, and each cluster has a tutor. Um, so you'll have three different ones per semester, so years one and two. Uh, the CBL tutor guides a group of about eight students through a weekly case pertaining to the week topic. Uh, the CBL cases are designed to shift the focus of student learning from foundational science to clinical knowledge and skills development, uh, with opportunities to demonstrate communication skills and model professional behaviors within the group. And so over a week, you'll, you'd have three tutorials um, or two tutorials a week in year two. Uh, students are presented with patient information and probing questions to articulate, elaborate, and apply medical science knowledge and develop dif differential diagnosis and patient management approaches. Um, this active learning solidifies uh, the student's knowledge and understanding of pathogenesis and pathophysiology of disease processes. Uh, so, and so throughout year one and two, the cases will progressively become more difficult and not as clear cut. Each week, your CBL group will explore the diagnosis, etiology, and treatment of a patient. And so as a group, it is our collective responsibility to work through the cases and we'll work with different members of the group to make most of our individual knowledge and abilities and help each other learn. And so the idea is that this learning format is designed to, for you to develop skills uh, such as thinking as a clinician and working efficiently and effectively in a team. The CBL, tutor, tutor, the CBL tutorials will underpin much of your learning throughout the first two years of uh, the medical program, and that will be supported by lectures, labs, and self-directed learning. Um, and so, touching on my personal experience, this is where I did most of my studying, to be honest. So basically what happens is that every Thursday at 12 p.m., they release the CBL pre-release for the next week's theme, where you look over the case and prompting questions and resources to look over and prepare uh, to discuss on the following Monday when you have the first CBL called Tutorial 1. And so every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, the tutorial of the day is released at 5 a.m. and CBL is at 8 a.m. LOL. Uh, each CBL group at the beginning of each cluster would decide on ground rules. Sometimes they'd be adamant. No one be a keener and wake up at 5 to look ahead at the new tutorial. Um, I have yet to see a group where they want to pre-look at 5 a.m. The curriculum here is a style program, which means that instead of doing organ system blocks, um, learning everything you can about the system all at once and then moving on, um, the spiral curriculum consists of every week or every couple to a few weeks, we learn about different organ systems. And then in later weeks and in second year, uh, we revisit the organ system and concepts so that we can learn it again and further and deeper. So overall, the idea is space repetition, a building of knowledge prior for hopefully longer attention, which I think is great. Okay, next system slash theme of the week lectures. Um, so as mentioned earlier, UBC does not do block system, but spiral. And so every week it could be a different organ system we talk about. Um, so all the content for that week would usually be tailored to the theme or system of the week. So usually lecture, uh, so if there's still holidays or long weekends, uh, usually lectures are Monday, Wednesday, Friday mornings and afternoons. Except for Monday afternoon, we have a different course called Foundations of Scholarship, where there are usually small group seminars. Um, and they used to have a large group seminar, which I believe they are reconsidering. So y'all are blessed. Uh, but yeah, I usually have time to do a module as well regarding the topic for that Monday. Um, and so your small group seminar is typically 
going to be the same for all four years of your medical school so that's neat um, that you have a support group that's consistent especially if you're at EFMP the class is so large you're definitely not going to get to know everyone um, but yeah let me tell you that there's going to be a lot of different groups and Facebook group chats that can make your head spin wild but that's what's well, a new week begins every Friday 11 a.m. and the lectures are mostly recorded which is a blessing but there are some that there are not so if you don't go it's at your own risk of missing out. Uh, what's really neat is that you can actually pre-watch or go ahead of lectures since they give you access to whatever was recorded from last year's class. Uh, for us the last lecture of the week usually is at 10 a.m. Friday called the week wrap up but it seems like they might be trying something new by having the last lecture focus more on decision-making skills. The class of 2027 will have to elaborate more for us. And then 11 a.m., the new week starts. Okay. So depending on what group you are, you can have family practice Tuesday and clinical skills Thursday or vice versa. Personally, I had family practice on Tuesday afternoon, then clinical skills Thursday afternoon. Family practice hours can include family practice seminars on various topics and then that is typically your scheduled curricular time to get your family practice hours done if you don't have a seminar uh, with a preceptor within the area that you are assigned to. I can only speak to VFMP and partially the Fraser cohort, but typically you're placed in student pods of one or two other medical students and assigned a family doctor willing to take medical students on. If you're in a student pod, you assign a person to correspond with the family doctor to figure out what uh, they prefer in terms of availability. So yes, just because you're scheduled for Tuesday afternoon doesn't mean you have to or can. It all depends on the doctor's availability and what they are comfortable with. Um, so whether they want one student to come in at a time or all can come in. The family doctor you can get will greatly vary. And so as expected, your experience will also greatly vary. Um, I've heard some of my classmates getting thrown in right away and doing everything possible like the second week of school or you know nothing well still really know nothing by the end but um, sometimes you'll just be asked to observe and basically just shadow the whole time but personally I've had good preceptors both times and blessed that they were in Vancouver sometimes people would get placed all the way to Abbotsford and maybe Chilliwack um, some experiences I got to learn or do in family practice is talking to a patient alone, getting histories, being taught some physical exam maneuvers by the family doctor, taking blood pressure, giving injections. Um, it's great. The school wants us to get as much experience as soon as possible and as much as possible. Um, but it all depends on the family doctor you get. Um, and so in the first year of family practice, students will have seminars, lectures, and visits to family practice office, like I mentioned. Um, and so sometimes the office visits will include virtual or telehealth opportunities as well, um, depending on your doctor. Um, and so that's also a great place to practice our interviewing skills that we learn from communication skills and clinical exam skills um, if your preceptor is comfortable with you doing it. And so the seminars I was mentioning about, so each semester they have different ones. First semester is Med 411, so you'll have some seminars that will cover vital signs, office procedures, physical activity, and hypertension. Um, some lecture themes will be geriatric. geriatric whoa. Like some lecture themes will be geriatric, whoa. medicine and health equity practices. Um, and in the second semester, Med 412, students will continue practicing examining real patients at your family doctor's office. And then the seminars will be focused on concussion, palliative care, headache, and fatigue. Okay, moving on to clinical skills. So for the first two months or so, we don't actually do clinical skills, but communication skills instead, which is so great. Before we learn any physical exams, they really try to stress the importance of being able to communicate and talk properly and compassionately with patients. In the first term, introduction to communication skills, 
Um, you'll be able to conduct interviews with volunteer and standardized patients and develop the skills necessary to take a medical history and deal with unique patient interactions. Um, and so this will typically be followed by the introduction to clinical skills portion of this course where uh, we're able to build our foundational clinical skills by obtaining vital signs, practicing um, cardiac, respiratory, abdominal, physical exam on a volunteer patient. And then the next semester, or the second term, we're going to spiral our clinical skills in cardiac, respiratory, gastrointestinal, ultrasound, neurology, ophthalmology, peripheral vascular, um, head, and neck, head, neck, and throat. Uh, by performing a focused medical history and conducting a physical exam. Okay, finally labs. Labs consist of anatomy, histology, pathology, um, usually Wednesday afternoon and or Friday afternoons as noted in the schedule. I would greatly urge you to go for as long as you can as there's just a consistent flow to the content that is being fed to us that if you put it off, usually it ends up being impossibly crammed at the end when you're also trying to review and study the main content. Oh, um, speaking for a friend. That way at the end, also that way at the end, you're not learning it for the first time but actually reviewing. Um, this seems like super straightforward advice but lol living through it towards the exams most people end up taking an l on it to focus on the main con lecture content Basically, what I love about UBC Med is that they really treat you like adult learners and give you as much flexibility as possible to let you tailor your own study and learning experiences. They have lots of resources, modules, interactive group sessions, and you can choose to go to class and or watch lectures before and or after at whatever speed you need. Um, the main goals to work towards really are to be prepared by exam time, and then you are free to organize your schedule however you want. Um, as you will be seeing my personal vlogs, I was still able to do all the things I enjoy and spend time with the people I love. My experience at UBC Med specifically has been a positive one, and I really believe anyone can do it as long as you truly desire. Um, you will and can make it work, especially with how supportive the faculty, staff, um, classmates, and program is. Thanks for watching. Bye! So, um, yeah, please comment down below if you have any questions, comments, or if you have been a medical student here and want to contrib contribute more to um, the video topic. Thanks for watching.